Hello, welcome to day 19 and in today's lesson we'll be looking at nested lists. Now while it is possible for you to have your list just on a straight forward declaration with your comma, it is also possible for you to have a list inside of a list and you can keep nesting it based on your data structure. And this is a cool thing that Python and other programming language has given to us as developers. Now let's see how we can access the list. In the first instance, let's run some print. In fact, before we do that, let's try to understand how many items or how many collections we have. So we can say we have one, two, three. Now, how can we access? Let's see. I'm going to run my print function. Then I'm going to call the nested list and of course declare my integer value. So let's have it in three places. So we're going to say one, two. Then let's check the length of the list itself. So it means that we need to just remove this and wrap this in the length. Len, len function will help us to get the actual number of the list collection. If we save it, I'm going to right click to run it. And as I run it, I should see my printout. Now we can see that we have collection one, collection two, and collection three, giving us tools have collection of three. This makes a lot of sense. So now that we're able to really print out the item on the list, how is it possible for us to also get item from the nested list? Let's see what we can do as well. So in accessing the nested list is something similar. So we're going to print function, then nested list so let's see now you're accessing the zero which is the first one right then you can also access the index of the first item so take for instance i want the two just the two so it means that i'll still declare my angle brackets and also have my zero so you can see how cool it is. So let's say we want the A of the second row. We can just say we want one of one. And if we duplicate as well, we can say we want two of two. Let's run it and see what we get. So you can see in the first instance, we got just the two, then we got the A. In the second instance, we got the, the B actually, because we reference one of one. In other words, you are referencing this collection, but because you reference one, then you're getting this. Now, the final part, we're getting 10.0 because we are referencing the last, which is two. This makes a lot of sense. Why not just pause this video and go ahead and also try to target the four, target the C and target the 6.5 and see the value that you get. Okay. Now let's move on. How is it possible for us to actually access and update our list item? Now, let's see what we can do with that. Now in accessing the list item, we can see how very seamless it is. How about we want to copy it? And how about we want to do something with it? Now there's something to note about 
copying. There are two ways to actually, or possibly three ways to make a copy. Let's see how we can copy our list in the first instance. So I'm going to say nested list. Let's add two to it. Then let's see if we can go ahead and just copy. So I'm going to just Okay, what I need is nested list, nested list. Then um, let's just use our slice to copy. Now, let me duplicate this as well. I'm just going to also say three. Then we can just call this one. We can call the copy method. In fact, let me just use print. Let's call the nested nested list two. Then let me print this the third one as well. Nested list three. All right. So let's print and see what we get. You can see that quite well, we're able to copy each of this item into another variable. So basically what you're doing is you're also doing a soft copy. It is also possible for you to copy a list and do it with the assignment operator. So imagine you're going for nested list four and we just go ahead and call the nested list and print nested list four let me just add a comment there to know that we are getting the right nested list four okay now let's run it and see what we get so you can see right here we have the nested list four with the same value so it is possible for you to actually copy each of this item but one thing to note is that this very one is pointing to the nested list which is what we declared in the beginning of our project right but what you've done with this two is you've actually you've copied it this is always referencing with the assignment operator is always referencing this so whenever this changes then it's going to affect this variable one because you're pointing to that very variable directly now let's see something else that we can do so i'm just going to copy this and let me put it down and just call it change values or let's just say updated values now uh, what we want to do right now is to update our list let's see if we can update some aspect of it let's see if we can update this too let's see if we can update the b and let's see if we can update the 10.0 okay so to do that we're just going to reference each of this to see what we get i'm going to reference each of this to really see what's going on so to do that let's call our nested list two then let's target the index i'm going to call the first nested list which is just a nested list then 
let's try to target this very first item so i'm just gonna say my index zero of course then zero so let's target uh, nested list two we're going to say we're targeting the one of one let's target a nested nested list three and of course we're going to target the two of two now let's assign another values to them i'm just going to call it let's say we give this 20 give this first one 20 then let's give the second one the value of d then we can give the third one the value of 40. let's make it a flute 40.0 now what do you think we'll get if we print each of this what are we going to get so let's call print function print function then nested list of course let's duplicate this into three places yes so we can have here we have two we have three let's run it and see what we get okay so you can see that we're able to get our values printed out and pretty much cool um, if you look at what we have right now so we're able to nest our list in the list and like i said you can have those embedded in, in between and based on your data structure and you also see that we can update the value and also access them individually so pretty much that's how we wrap it up on this one if you like this tutorial subscribe to our youtube channel or follow us on all our social media handles so that you can be notified each time we release a new tip until next time i'll see you in the next one